Let's say you are travelling in a car, and you observe a tree to the right side of the mountain. But as the car covers some distance, you see that the tree has moved to the left side of the mountain. In fact, objects closer to you are moving faster as compared to the objects away from you. Every day you see this effect and think nothing until it's given some mysterious scientific sounding name. Parallax. Parallax. I'm going to hang up this phone and then I'm going to show these people what you don't want them to see. It's a wonderfully clear starry night above Phuket here and uh, good to point out something that doesn't happen that should do if we are on a spinning ball earth and that we are looking at stars that are uh, great distances apart and that's parallax. Now for some reason people talk about parallax as being some kind of proof that we are on a globe but um, they're talking out their asses because we just don't see any parallax when in fact we should do because parallax occurs when we look at uh, <clears throat> objects that are of different distances from us. You've got something in the foreground, something in the background and beyond. So it's when we have uh, things that are uh, varying distances from us that we do in fact get parallax but we don't see any. Okay, it's perfectly understood that the stars are very far away uh, regardless of how close they might be uh, but what we seem to see up there is stars that are about uh, you know at about all about the same height above the earth in what might be some kind of layer of stars or whatever we do not see any evidence whatsoever that uh, we have one star that is relatively close whether you want to talk in terms of hundreds thousands or millions of miles but uh, you know the next star that we see should be several more million miles away from that one so we should in fact see some parallax especially if we are on an earth that's turning and uh, we should see the paths of these stars cross. They should go behind each other. In fact, the, the, the night sky would be a total mess if all the stars were of different distances from the Earth. We would definitely get uh, a large amount of parallax, but we really don't see any. And those people that claim there is parallax uh, are only repeating the claim that's apparently made with very high precision instruments and of course uh, things like uh, the air can get in the way and there's no way of ever confirming that it's just one of those things that's oft repeated by people who wish to defend uh, their belief in the globe with just another explanation that uh, is no way verifiable whatsoever so yeah just think about that the fact that um, when we do look at objects that are close and far away and even further away, we get parallax, but uh, we do not ever see any parallax with the stars, whatever they are and how far away they are from us uh, remains a total mystery. But uh, to claim that uh, this, this light up here is some kind of planet or, or, or whatever it might be, another sun, it's just stupid. It's obviously, it is a light in the sky, uh, but uh, that's about as much as we know about these things. Uh, even if you have a, de a degree in astronomy and you're allowed to look at them through very expensive telescopes, uh, there is nothing about looking at the stars that tells us anything about any alleged shape, dimension, or movement of the Earth that we are on. Uh, it remains a complete mystery. And I'm quite happy with that, and there's no need for anyone to have to come up with any alternative numbers, models, or figures. To do so is asinine, because it's quite obvious that no one's got a clue, and uh, we might not ever know what these stars really are. Uh, so it's all completely open to interpretation, which of course is what's done uh, to uh, give us this heliocentric spinning globe model that doesn't have any basis in reality whatsoever defies physics defies observations it's all just 
compartmentalized stories that do not have any basis in reality. So my question to you is this, are you going to deny what you see with your own eyes that the Earth is stationary and instead believe what you don't understand that the Earth is spinning? Critically think, water needs a container, okay? So if we're on a globe, how would there be a container on a sphere? If you think about a pool, picture a pool without the container. How is the water being held in without some kind of container? That's exactly what the globe is. You can't have a container on a sphere, guys. This is the biggest, most obvious thing about how we're not on a spinning globe, is that there's no container on a globe. There is a flat earth, a flat surface, and a container holding the water in. There's no way around needing a container to hold the water in. We have a container holding the water in. There has to be. You cannot deny that water needs a container and that water always finds its level and that it has to have something to hold it in. Water does not curve. If you have a ball or a circle or a sphere, however you want to say it, water would separate if it was on a ball. I know one thing. The water is always level. Wherever we go, Water is always level. And we are motionless. It's interesting how water is always level. Water is used as a level to level things out. Why would water be flat on a sphere?